Beware the veteran in a world where most people die young. Kiwi is a prime example of this danger. She is certainly no stranger to the reality of Night City. Kill or be killed, always be five steps ahead. As an experienced netrunner, she's definitely seen her fair share of the worst Night City has to offer. Kiwi knows the stakes of her work. But when it comes to Kiwi, this was not the most dangerous thing about her, not by a long shot. Because of her years in the field, Kiwi learned a lesson that so many edge runners die too young to understand. Get your bag and get out as soon as you can. Kiwi was not motivated by glory. And personally, I don't think she was all that motivated by greed or wealth. Kiwi wanted freedom. Freedom from a life where she was taken for granted, abused, tired, and she came so close to living a life all her own, when her own guilt dragged her back down. Kiwi is an enigma. It is so hard to find that much information on her past. Reddit is full of conjecture. The wiki only has the basic facts, and not even the year of her birth. We don't even know how old Kiwi is, where she learned her skills, or where she's even from. But I do have some educated guesses on Kiwi's past. Kiwi showed up in Maine's crew after the death of Sasha Yakovleva, and was part of the crew when Lucy showed up. Maine says to David that Lucy's been a part of his crew for about a year, so that gives us a rough idea of Kiwi's timeline. I'm assuming at most maybe like five years, but that's sort of up in the air. We know that Kiwi is a skilled netrunner. Even after Maine and Dorio's death, Kiwi is still the primary netrunner for David's crew. And she's still lethal and efficient. We can only wonder where she learned her skills. Kiwi also comes off as very guarded. While she's perfectly comfortable lounging in the nude in front of Maine and David, <laughs> her life story is locked away. Kiwi never betrays any personal details about herself. Her mask is as much a part of her remarkable look as it is to hide that hollow spot she doesn't want others to know about. Because of all the people in the crew, she is closest to Lucy. At first, this could be the simple shared background of their being net runners. But once Kiwi finds out Lucy's past, it does affect her. I won't say that Kiwi had similar early years like Lucy. We can never truly know that. But I get the feeling that she understands what it's like to be used and abused in this cutthroat world. To me, I think Kiwi sees a lot of herself in Lucy, the same way that Maine sees a lot of himself in David. While we'll never know much about Kiwi's past, these key points pertaining to her skill and her background, the implication that she has suffered more than we will ever know are the key reasons why she betrays David and Lucy. Kiwi does try to get out of Night City, and she's willing to betray Lucy and David to do it. But why? And more importantly, why does she have that change of heart at the end? I think it goes beyond just wanting simple revenge on Faraday. We gather Kiwi knew Faraday just by how familiar they seem to be with one another. She doesn't entirely trust him either. But the promise of money is too tempting for her. Kiwi isn't thinking about a big apartment or on the surface riches. Kiwi wants to leave Night City for good. I do believe, based on what I mentioned earlier with Lucy's background affecting Kiwi, she has been through a lot. And we can see a repeated pattern of Kiwi being used and taken advantage of throughout Edge Runners. Maine beats the shit out of her when he's going cyber psycho because she's not doing her job fast enough. And while Maine is losing his mind at this point, this will stick with her, and a year later, we see, time and time again, how she is not thanked by David half as often as she is ordered to do things by him. Most of her interactions with the group that we see, she's called an old hag, or she's only being spoken to about what she can do for them. Falco being the exception. This treatment of Netrunners as mere tools is a pattern in cyberpunk, and it's sad. And when Faraday approaches her to work for him, you can see the obvious hesitation in her eyes. 
It's only an assumption at this point, but based on the pattern of Kiwi's life, it is probable that Faraday did screw her over in the past, but she accepts his job because Faraday offers her what he knows Kiwi will go for, the resources to leave her past behind. But if there is obviously little trust between her and Faraday, why does Kiwi go back to him in the end? A part of me believes that this is due to Kiwi's habit of trusting the wrong people a little too much. I believe that Kiwi goes back to Faraday out of whatever old obligation she may still feel she has towards him, just based on what Faraday says about we owe it to ourselves to meet up again. Kiwi is taken advantage of for the last time, and this ends with her sad death. But why does Kiwi attempt to make things right with David, Lucy, and the crew? As I do believe that Kiwi sees herself in Lucy, and that she remembers the lessons that she has taught Lucy in the past. Kiwi does feel regret. She realizes the mistakes she has made. I believe she makes this last attempt to help her old friends in order to make sure that Lucy does not suffer based on her misguided decisions. But Kiwi isn't heartless, or as cold as some people mistake her to be. She does feel guilty, and she does recognize that what she is doing is selfish. She understands that she is betraying her friends. She dies surrounded by garbage, so close to leaving it all behind. Kiwi does call Falco and the others to try and give them the upper hand in the coming battle at Arasaka Tower. At the very least, Kiwi hopes that David can save Lucy from the same fate by being used and exploited for her net running abilities for the rest of her life. Ironically, Kiwi is one of the few characters, aside from Lucy, who actively tries to leave Night City for good. And I don't think it's a coincidence that both runners want to leave. This is another reason why I think Kiwi has been through a similar sort of ringer to Lucy. Both recognize how horrible a place Night City is. Even in 2077, endings that involve leaving Night City are endings that imply freedom. Night City being a jailer of sorts. Both of these women, both of these netrunners, wanted their liberty. The thing that I stopped and realized as I was writing this video is the fact that if we flipped the circumstances and had Lucy do everything to Kiwi that Kiwi did to her, we as the audience would probably be sympathetic. Which I totally understand why, because David and Lucy are our main characters. Kiwi is an antagonist in their story. But honestly, I can't fault her for what she did, as crappy as it was. I do believe David still would have met a similar fate in terms of cyberpsychosis, but Kiwi did take away any sliver of hope that he would change his mind. It still sucks because you are left to ask what if. But putting yourself in Kiwi's shoes, more years of abuse, of being viewed as a tool by the people she works with than David and Lucy combined, can make us understand why Kiwi wanted for herself what we, the audience, wanted for David and Lucy. A life far away from the killing grounds of Night City. It's noteworthy that Kiwi more or less foreshadows her own death in what she says to Becca. You up the dance floor. <laughs> Although some edge runners die more shame than they started with. And Kiwi does die with more shame than she started with, doing to others what others have done to her in the past. The one silver lining about Kiwi is that she had a better heart than most of those who hurt her. Thank you so much for watching. This was extremely enlightening. At first, I never really had strong feelings towards Kiwi, but in looking into her character and trying to take on this topic for this video, I learned a lot and I actually feel bad for her. <laughs> I do, and I, she's not my favorite character in the show, but I like her way more than I used to. She was very interesting, very. I saw in an AMA that there was more content they had to cut from the show that maybe could have expanded on her background and it's a shame. I would have loved to have known more about Kiwi and the other characters as well, but 
mainly Kiwi for me personally. Uh, if you decide to like or subscribe, I greatly appreciate it. It helps me out a lot. I make these videos because I am a writer and I love a good story. These are also very useful for me because I actually get to analyze the stories that I love and be like, oh, that's why I like this story. Okay, and you know, learn it and put it into my own writing, so to speak. I actually have a published book out called Kaisaria Book One. If you are interested in reading it, it is a post-apocalyptic novel written in an almost novelized manga style. I write all of my stories in short installments that contribute to an overarching story. This is just book one in a series of potentially 90 entries. That's gonna be a while. Uh, I have another book series coming out soon with the first book. It is a uh, urban fantasy monster hunters in Toronto, Ontario. I am very excited about that. That is in the final drafts. I will leave a link to my book in the description below if you are interested. Uh, thank you very much if you do. It means a lot to me. Thank you very much for watching this far, guys. I greatly appreciate it. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful week even. Thank you very much. All the best. Bye.